Alex from Stratify here, and we're in our Mark 7 GTI. And today we're going to demonstrate and talk a little bit about the um, traction control that we offer with our tunes, our calibrations. So we get a lot of questions about how is this different than the OEM traction control? What does it do? Uh, how is it implemented? And uh, you know, at the end of the day, is it something that uh, that I want uh, on my car? So <clears throat> as we know front-wheel drive and you know really two-wheel drive cars uh, have a limit for traction and uh, because of that it's good to manage that traction now for motorsports type applications there's different varieties of, of traction control that really help you uh, basically not just lose control of the vehicle but help you maintain the best level of traction that is available and there's a distinction there because most OEM traction control systems are designed uh, for you to maintain the best control of the vehicle. And uh, you know, from a safety standpoint, of course, that's, uh, that's what's important. But from a performance standpoint, it may not be something that you want. And the reason for that is because you can lose too much momentum with a little bit of traction loss. So the system, the OEM system would detect a little bit of traction loss and at that point says, okay, so uh, the driver is perhaps not expecting this traction control, will err on the side of caution, uh, this traction control loss event, we'll err on the side of caution and we're going to, to basically uh, do a few things. There's a few strategies. One, it's it'll uh, close the throttle, uh, another one is it'll reduce boost via wastegate, uh, and then finally we'll apply the brakes to to slow down uh, one or both of the wheels that that are losing traction. So those kind of uh, traction control events are fairly intrusive, and uh, like I said, they're designed around safety. And for someone that basically knows how to manage traction, the vehicle they can get in the way. Now for the Volkswagen. As it comes out of the box, it's really difficult to remove two things just without any sort of programming changes to the car. It's uh, it's difficult to remove the anti-skip regulation uh, from the car, and it's uh, difficult to get it into to a point that it will allow wheel spin in the front. So you can do some VCDS uh, programming where although you're not able to fully, fully disable stability control, you're able to, via the toggle on the dash, uh, disable ASR, so the anti-skip regulation, uh, and also get, get to the point that you are, um, uh, you're able to have wheel spin, uh, or the ECU allows you to have wheel spin. And here is where our traction control uh, really comes into play and uh, and becomes useful because when when you are able to remove the OEM traction control we can just have uh, our own traction control act on the front wheels and manage traction and the traction control that is actually a software implementation that's unique to Cobb and which we tune to our specs and our standards that we have developed and tested uh, works on the basis of spark reduction so one way to reduce torque uh, going to the wheels when there's a loss of traction is to uh, limit spark advance. And limiting spark advance is a lot less intrusive and uh, a, a lot you lose a lot less momentum by, by reducing spark advance. You can reintroduce spark advance very quickly, whereas spooling a turbo up and down takes a lot longer, comparatively speaking. Uh, losing momentum by applying brakes takes a lot longer to regain that momentum and it can be jarring on the drivetrain and, and the experience. So spark reduction is, is a very effective and smooth way to, to bring in uh, traction control or to manage traction without allowing uh, excessive wheel spin and with allowing you to manage that wheel spin. So this is, this is about wheel spin management rather than a complete interruption of wheel spin when it happens. So you can think of when traction control, just the cob uh, traction control is active, 
you can think of it as you're able to pedal your way out of it. So you're able to modulate the throttle and and get the best traction with a little bit of slip from the car, from the front wheels, without losing a ton of momentum. It allows you to grab the next gear, it allows you to not bang into the rev limiter. And importantly, most importantly, it allows you to have the, um, the best acceleration possible in less than ideal traction conditions. So in order to do this, like I said, we have to first uh, remove the OEM traction control to the point that it allows wheel spin. So this car has had the VCDS programming done and uh, there you go, we've, we've done this right now. And we're going to demonstrate now traction control from just based on uh, uh, on the Cobb system that is tuned by us to our own specs. So I'm going to, to show you this and just watch the tachometer and listen to how the engine and the car sounds. So we're gonna get it into second gear. Second gear is a, is a gear that usually uh, slips quite a bit. And now we're just going to accelerate. So you saw there that there was a loss of traction and the traction control, the, the car based traction control system kicked in it allowed me to regain traction, there was a loss of traction again, and then it allowed me to finally regain traction and make the best of a traction loss situation. So I'll demonstrate it again. We're back to second gear here, and just watch carefully the tachometer, and as traction is lost and gained, and then it allows me to go, uh, to go into the next gear. So this is a very effective way to maintain the, the most amount of traction that is available, especially in these two-wheel drive cars, it's, it's very effective. So, we really strongly recommend it as you modify your car, as you run into, into issues of traction, you know, wet pavement, uh, and, and so on, it's inevitable that you're going to have in the lower gear some traction problems. And this system is very, very effective and works really, really well. As you saw there, there was no jarring motion, there was really not a lot of loss of momentum. I was just able to accelerate through the event, uh, manage it with my throttle, and, and make the best of the situation. Now, the traction control system, the way we set it up is that uh, there are several modes uh, to it and uh, we are able to uh, adjust, you are able to actually adjust those modes. So the uh, mode, uh, the, the lower the mode, the uh, basically the l more intrusive the system is and the higher the mode you move in and there's a graphic for this uh, the less intrusive the system is so the more slip is allowed before the traction control system kicks in and um, you can do this via the handheld right on the access port uh, we set mode number one to be the ideal setting which through a lot of testing we've identified to be the ideal setting on on these vehicles uh, and the rest of the modes you can they're at your fingertips you can play with them and depending on the surface that you're on you can identify if there's a better mode for you so uh, once again this is a, a demonstration and an explanation how the car based which is spark based traction control system works and how it is different from uh, an OEM style traction control system which has safety as its at utmost priority and, and it expects a driver to, to unexpectedly lose traction which is different when, when driving the car enthusiastically and when driving the car in a performance setting where it's not an unexpected traction loss and you want to make the most out of the traction available. Uh, this is uh, effective to use on the street. This is effective to use on the on the drag strip. So really, at uh, at any point that uh, you experience traction loss. Thanks for watching, and hopefully this was uh, informative. And uh, if you have any questions, then let us know. <laughs>